Hello, I'm Morris Williamson. I'm Minister of Building and Construction and I want to take the next few minutes to try and encourage each and every one of you to participate in a discussion document and then a final decision making process that the government's embarked on with regards to what we call earthquake prone buildings. So let me explain the background. Since the uh, tragic earthquake of the 22nd of February of 2011, it's become clear that there is a huge stock of buildings right across the country that may or may not be up to standard and may or may not require some strengthening work to bring them up to that standard. So what the government has done is put out a, a fairly uh, detailed discussion document canvassing all of the issues regards, with, with regards to time, whether we mandate it, how far up the safety curve we take it, there will always be a balance in this debate about if you go too far up and make the buildings almost platinum end of the safety curve, they will be priced out of the market and the economy would be bankrupt. But if we leave it down at the very bottom end of the safety curve, they pose huge risk to human beings. So the document sort of canvasses things like uh, the risk of you dying on the road, the risk of you drowning in a swimming pool, and then says the risks with regards to earthquake prone buildings, which are still a lot lower than any of those events, but they do need to be addressed. And in each one of the proposals, you will see what the Royal Commission uh, on the Canterbury earthquake are proposing. They've got their views. The government has uh, some other issues we put alongside those. And what we want to do is try to distill from each and every one of you out there what you think are the levels we should go to. There are specific topics that need to be thought about. What do we do with some heritage buildings? In a city like Whanganui, for example, where there is a huge number of very old but very important heritage buildings, if we were to force the modern building standard onto those, they would literally all have to be demolished. There's another issue with regards to infrequently used buildings. You may find a rural church gets used once a month. Do you really want to put the restrictions and limitations on this, or same uh, limitations and restrictions on that sort of a building that you would on a building that is being in regular use with lots of people? Uh, there is issues in there about public awareness and good public information campaign. Uh, I am a fan of making people very much aware of what the rankings and ratings of the buildings they are using are and then let them make determination on a sort of a market forces driven, telling the landlord I'm no longer prepared to ca carry on with my lease unless you do something. And I guess the best analogy I could give each and every one of you is the, the motor vehicle industry. In that, the government sets what we call a warrant of fitness standard for all cars, which is a base minimum. You know, you must have brakes, you must have uh, good tyres, you must have headlights, indicators and so on. However, we then hope that everybody out there would like to, over time, uh, migrate up the safety curve by buying cars that have got better frontal impact standards, by buying cars for which there are airbags and air cushions and so on. Well, the same thing will go with the earthquake prone building. So we, we, we can't we could wish for it, but we can't make every building that's currently in this country up to the new building standard. So here's the opportunity for everyone that wants to, to get out there to participate. Tell us what you think. Work yourself through the document because it's logically laid out with a series of, of chances for you to respond to questions and to put in writing the things you think. I promise you we haven't got a closed mind on any of this stuff at this point when we've collated it all together and, and come back to the, to the public with a general view of it, uh, we'll then form a policy that'll go to the cabinet about where we go and then whatever's mandatory will go out to being directed to local authorities and whatever is uh, at least a, a general guidance we'll put out as well and the time frames for which that will need to be achieved will be made public. A great opportunity for everybody that's interested in this to take part. I, I, I beg you actually to take some time put some energy into it and help everybody, including myself, come to what I think will be a logical conclusion as to where we take this stuff. Thanks for your time.